So I'm going to remind everybody that we are recording today's webinar and that all registered attendees will be receiving an email from us with links to the on-demand version of the webinar as well as a PDF of the slide deck. So keep a lookout for that. If at any time during today's webinar you experience technical difficulties, please go ahead and email us at webinars at bia.com. We have some staff that is monitoring that email and can try to assist you with that. And then finally, we just like to encourage everyone to ask questions throughout today's webinar. We want to be really active with everybody. We have some great panelists and a great expert with Tanya. So we encourage you to ask questions whenever they come in during the webinar. We'll try to take a few breaks to answer some of those. And if we don't have time for everyone's webinar questions, we'll be sure to follow up with you afterwards. So I think we're going to go ahead and get some started here then. I'm going to hand things over to the CEO of Sales Fuel, Lee Smith. Lee, take it away. Okay, Adam, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Welcome everyone to today's webinar, 400 plus of you today, and for a webinar during July when, it, when everyone seems to be on vacation, uh, we really appreciate you being here and you're going to get some great value from today's session. I'm C. Lee Smith, I'm the president and CEO of SalesFuel, I'm best known as the creator of AdMall, and I'll be your host for today's webinar. And joining me uh, from BIA Advisory Services, Celine Matisson. She is the VP of Insights and Analytics, and she's going to be sharing some great data from BIA. I'll be sharing some great data from AdMall as well. Our special guest today is, is Tanya Sturl. She is the founder of Sturl & Style, personal stylist, fashion expert, speaker, published co-author, and I'll get a little bit more detail about Tanya when we get uh, to her portion of the program. So today we're going to talk about back to school. We're going to talk about back to work. And of course, we're going to focus in on what's happening in the marketplace, how you can take advantage of it, and how that impacts media sales. So we're going to cover market trends in the second half of 2021 projections as it turns in terms of media spend. Uh, Tanya is also going to be talking about the uh, fashion trends as well. And we expect you guys to have a lot of questions about how that impacts you as salespeople, but also as professional executives. Uh, we're going to be talking about digital sales strategies, and uh, we're going to have a deep sub-vertical analysis of clothing stores, shoe stores, discount department stores, warehouse clubs, and super centers. However, that's going to be at the end of today's presentation. We're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, so we're going to allow a lot of time for questions and answers from you. And if we have a lot of questions, then we will spend the time on the questions then, and the sub-vertical analysis will be included in the slide deck, which you will receive at the end of the webinar. If not, though, we will we will cover them as usual because you know, Celine and I love talking about that stuff. Uh, also, a little reminder: coming in August, our 2021 local digital event series is going to focus on insurance and mortgages. So, mortgage providers have, have been a really hot area. That's going to be next month's feature. Next slide, please. So, without further delay, Celine, take it take it away and tell us what's happening at BIA. Oh yeah, so let's get into the thick of it here. What consumers are spending on back to school versus retail businesses spending on advertising in 2021? So what you're seeing on the left, that circle, um, that's from Deloitte's back to school study uh, for 2021. They do this every year, 1200 parents from K to 12 grade with kids from K to 12 grade. And they ask them a ton of questions about their shopping behaviors for back to school. So 32.5 billion this year is gonna be spent by parents back to school. And I'm sure the parents that are on the phone can say, yeah, um, the 612 average spend per child, that's probably low. <laughs> we don't have a per household for this, but you can, you know, uh, you know, average households, usually uh, two to three, two kids, almost three kids. So you can get an idea of what that's gonna look like. Um, that's an increase in spend um, year over year of 16%, which is really nice. Uh, so over half, 59%, of the back to school spending will happen in the end of July. I kid you not, the end of July. Why is that? You think with uh, COVID, uh, well, everybody's getting out. You know, consumers are more confident. They're going to brick and mortar stores. I know I've been to Old Navy at least three times in the last two months. Um, they plan on spending, you know, and they plan on spending more, um, refreshing kids' wardrobes, you know, stocking up. However, everybody has PTS from stock issues in COVID last year. So that has them buying earlier. Um, they are afraid of sellouts, especially for school supplies and other unique items. Uh, and then also Deloitte mentioned that, now again, this is based on their study, um, that the year over year growth in spend is due more to technology. Again, an influence from last year, kids had um, to work, uh, be at home for school. So there was more tech that needed to be purchased. Again, that's gonna drive a lot of the spend here also. 
Um, the other good news is over 40% of households, according to their survey, expect to spend more this year. And again, as you see, spend is up to 612 per child from 529, okay? So then on the right, we said, okay, well, that's the consumer spend. So how are back to school businesses responding? And what you're seeing here is a customer roll-up that we did of our Advantage retail verticals. We cover over 28 retail verticals. Not all of them are gonna be back to school shop, like luggage is, well, maybe for college, but luggage is not gonna be a big category for back to school, for example. So right below our logo on that circle, you're gonna see those businesses that we've included um, as we consider this number for back to school shopping. Advantage clients, our clients, hey, how you doing? Uh, you won't find this grouping in Advantage. I would love, hint, hint, to have it, but you can email and ask us for it for your market. Uh, while BI forecasts for the whole year for this, okay, this is not just ad spend for the back to school period, but it's spend for the whole year by these retailers. So overall ad spend for those retail categories are increasing 7.4% year over year, which again is a healthy gain. If we looked at all of our 28 plus retail categories overall, they're up 8%. So it's right, right in there, you know, they're contributing to that. Um, so what you're seeing here is again for 2021, 4.2 billion for 2020, it was 3.2 billion. So good, healthy 7.4% year over year increase. Okay, so uh, next, uh, next slide. So that was for K through 12. What about college? I have a college student raising my hand on that one. I can tell you, I'm probably spending 1,200, if not more, on back to school shopping. For Same here. Right? Amen. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. probably double that, you know. Um, I think I've already spent that in the summer. Anyway, so again, <laughs> to give you an idea, the total expected spend, this is from the National Retail Federation Annual Back to School College Survey. Um, it's up. It's going up. Um, so that's also good news. So, you know, for your advertisers that you know, have stores that are catering to college students, definitely uh, need to show them this data. Uh, next slide. So back to the K through 12 kids, good news, 88% parents plan to shop back to school. And what you see down there is where they're spending their money. So um, this is a Mulberry survey, this is not the Deloitte, and they asked, you know, on categories, what are you spending on? What did you spend on last year? They did the study last year, and what did you spend on it this year? And you can see, again, Clothes, school supplies, and shoes um, are increasing and are the top spends on there also. So, okay, so next slide. Notice so that the technology I, is down a little bit there too, Celine. Yeah, you well, that's, that? why, yeah that's, that's why I said the Deloitte one said technology is driving it. But again, this study is only of 1,000, um, 1,100 consumers in July, 20, June 2021. And um, the majority have kids in elementary school. So it could just be the sample in that too. So there's a little different perspective on that. But you can also see some of the, I mean, yeah, because like new laptops are down a little. They probably bought them last year in tablets. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But accessories are up. So that's interesting. Um, I, don't, I don't know specifically what their definition was for accessories um, for back to school. But it could be backpacks, for example, and gym bags on there too. Okay, so um, then let's go to the next slide. So back to that Deloitte study, okay. Uh, back to school study. So here's how consumers are spending by channel for back to school shopping. So if you look at that pie chart, it's really interesting. There's six billion at play where consumers are not sure if they're gonna go in store or if they're gonna go online. That's a huge opportunity. Um, this is something that is interesting. Uh, I love that Deloitte does this because it shows you again that you know consumers are using different channels for purchasing. Um, and that's important for advertisers to remember when they're advertising. If you look on the right, 48% of mass, uh, mass merchants and online, 15% for online only stores um, get, get the most um, share of that spend when we look at that. Um, so in-store and online are, you know, close to splitting, you know, again, so 6 billion undecided channels. So, you know, it's good. This is a good example of when you're doing a multi-channel approach, what, why, what you, uh, in advertising, what you should show them why they need to do this because where consumers are buying. Okay, uh, next slide. So enough about the back to school. We're really interested in back to work because this sets us up for Tanya and you know, can't wait to pick her brain about all sorts of stuff. But uh, wanted to show you this also. Uh, according to NPB, NPD, sorry, back in May, this is a study that you're seeing on here. Back in May, they asked in 60, 90 days what you're gonna be shopping for. 
what consumers are shopping for. Clothes and shoes are number one. So that's about, you know, July, August, back to school time. And that can include back to school. Um, NPD also says that because we're all out socializing more and getting um, and getting back out and dressing up, you know, we're also getting back to the workforce a little. Um, NPD also said the reasons that consumers were giving is they wanted to refresh their wardrobes and dress up. However, when they asked them specifically what that level of dressing up was for work, um, it's never going to be the same um, for, for people before COVID. So, you know, 70% of consumers plan to dress just or more casually than before the pandemic once they return to work and other activities. Um, so that has a big impact on what that back to school shopping um, style is gonna look like. And to talk more about that and to dig more into what does this mean, dressing for work, I have the great pleasure of having an expert um, on this webinar. We have this expert on this webinar, Tanya Sturl. She's a personal stylist, fashion expert, speaker, uh, founder of Stone Style. She brings 20 plus years of fashion ex expertise to dress women for success. And she has dressed professionals from emerging and established corporate professionals to rising entrepreneurial stars to take both their image influence to the next level. Next level. She also was a former fashion designer and her um, fashion designs were featured in Marie Claire to Essence um, and her designs were worn by TV personalities. Tanya, who's one of the TV personalities that's worn your style? Oh, Deborah Norville of Inside Edition, the Fox News team, um, and various others. Well, great. Well, welcome. Thank well, you, Celine. Thank you, Lee. So happy to be here. It's great so, to have you. When I got to hear you give a presentation, a webinar that I attended a, about a month or so ago, really knew your stuff and I knew that you were the person that we needed to have on, on today's webinar then to help all of our media sellers out there. So welcome. Excellent, thank you so much. So where should we start? Well, let's ask you a little bit about what you're doing for advertising. So, you know, what what do you use? What are your advertising channels? How do you, uh, how do you get your customers? Mm -hmm. So um, for me, my it, it always comes down to uh, target audience and target clients, right? Just like everyone uh, listening in today, each and every one of you is an expert in what you do. Um, so for me, my key target clients are mostly women over 40, mostly women in director, manager, or executive type positions, and also um, people who are authors, speakers, thought leaders who are elevating their image and influence. So for me, it's where am I reaching those clients and that audience? So I am on LinkedIn, I'm on Instagram. Those are my uh, two most popular places to showcase my work, showcase articles. I give Tip Tuesday style videos. Um, I'm also on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel giving relevant styling tips. But once people see um, my tips, once they see my content, once they see the clients that I'm showcasing on Instagram and LinkedIn, it really gives them an insight into uh, me, my brand, and my specific approach to personal styling. So Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. Um, I also have my website, of course, Stirl on Style. Um, but in the last year with COVID and lockdown, digital and online presence uh, has been key for sure. Daniel, let's set the stage here for everybody. I want to get your take on what the impact of the pandemic has been on the fashion industry, since it is a global industry with a, with, with a, a lot of the product, if you will, being made in Asia so that you have that issue. And then maybe kind of dovetail as, as well into some of the industry trends that you're seeing for fall 2021. Yeah, absolutely. So I was in the fashion industry for about 20 years, uh, from the 90s to about 2013 when I launched my uh, styling business. And it's been interesting to see the different trends in, uh, you know, fashion production, um, what what's affected it over the last few decades. And with the pandemic and COVID and lockdown, production in China stopped. Production in Italy stopped. One of my dear friends is a shoe designer. He's got two boutiques right here in Manhattan. And Italy was hit hard, if not harder, than China. So how this affected was, um, you know, A, there wasn't the demand from the consumers. We were all working from home, just surviving <laughs> and getting by in our, you know, stretch yoga pants. So the demand wasn't there. 
um, deliveries were delayed, deliveries were late because basically production shut down. So it was interesting for me this past uh, March, April, when I'm back in stores uh, shopping with clients, very few sizes available. Where are the colors? They have the last fall delivery on the floor and they're calling it spring one. So there has just been this kind of six month um, delay from uh, the production side. Um, the good news is now it's not about surviving, it's about thriving. So um, aspirations are up, people are being more positive and there is this return to work, there is this return uh, to school. And after being, right, it's also psychological, after being depraved <laughs> of being able to dine out, entertain and shop, shopping is a form of entertainment. So I think um, there's definitely this optimism, there's this need and aspiration to want to get dressed for work again whether we're virtual and online, and especially now with the return uh, to, to back, back to the office. Um, so that's what I see happening right now for summer. I mean, I've had so many clients call me up and just go, I can't wear the same 10 things that I've been wearing for the last 15 months. I need a refresher, right? Clothing, mm -hmm. our appearance, our style, whether it's a new pair of glasses or a bright color shirt, it's a feel good, it's psychological. If for those of you who are into brain science and the nerds on the call, look up enclosed cognition, enclosed cognition, right? That's the effect our um, clothing has on our self-perception, um, thus how others are perceiving us. So there is that demand from the consumers. They want something new. They want something fresh. They want that feel good. And so now it's up to the fashion industry China, Italy, Europe, et cetera, global production to catch up to that. Meanwhile, I'm still seeing tie-dye sweatsuits, you know, in the stores <laughs> from a year ago. So it's it's a little bit of a confusing time while we're in this transition. Um, but going forward for fall, there's definitely going to be this resurgence of what I call decorum. People really wanting to take that little bit of extra care to look uh, polished and professional as they return to the office. But with a casual edge, what I call casual chic or casual smart. Um, and just thanks for the next slide, Lee. Um, these are just some of the, um, you know, trends coming up. And for those of you on the call who are thinking about, like, how you're showing up for work or, you know, what your clients need, you have to get into the mind of what the consumer spending trends are. With COVID and lockdown, we saw these four types. The slam on the brakes, I don't need to buy anything new, to a little bit of pain but patient, what's going on, but I still want to keep updated with the trends. Um, the live for today, no matter what's going on in the world, <laughs> they need something fresh and new to make them feel, you know, vibrant and alive. And then the other group, the comfortably well off, the ones that uh, like to invest in the luxury brands, they're going to continue to buy almost everything. So it's really important to understand those consumer spending types because that's who the fashion industry then has to respond to and provide to. That's that's great. I love these uh, because I think I'm I was in all four phases of this at some point <laughs> during COVID. Um, so what stores or brands based on this are clients like your clients and what are people shopping preferring right now? I mean, is this, this is their, this is how they're shopping. Where are they shopping more now? Yeah. Who's yeah. the hot retailers right now? Yeah. yeah. So I'm based in New York city. Um, so fashion capital of, uh, you know, the, the U S here. So I'm in the heart of New York city. So I'm lucky. I have a little bit of everything at my fingertips from the department stores to specialty stores and boutiques to private showrooms, to specialty, you know, pop-up stores and experiential stores that are happening. So for me, again, my target clients, they're either working corporate, uh, law, finance um, executives, or they're entrepreneurs, women who are the name and face of their brand and they need to look polished but make it unique. So I can make uh, the most sense of it at a Saks Fifth Avenue, a Bloomingdale's. I have some clients, I shop what I call high-low, I may take them to a Saks or Bloomingdale's for um, great shoes, a little bit of designer, but then I make it make sense at a Macy's 
or a Banana Republic or a Gap because they have great fitting pants. Who doesn't need <laughs> great fitting pants right now? Has been a great demand. Um, and then there's a lot of uh, female founded brands and designers based right here in New York City. One of my new favorites is called Ally Shoes, A-L-L-Y, because our shoes should be our ally, not our enemy. Uh, sure. they, they've created the most comfortable, uh, sensible two-inch pump for women. Um, and brands like Aisha New York, who's a brand I've uh, been affiliated with uh, for a while now, who um, makes a really specialty store uh, private showroom experience. So I would say from the department stores, a Saks, a Bloomingdale's, because they have many brands under one roof. For professional attire, Lafayette 148. I love them. They include all sizes from zero petite to 22 tall and everything in between. Um, a Lafayette 148, Theory and Tahari for my professional women. And I'll get a little creative with some Diane von Furstenberg, Rebecca Taylor and some European brands um, like Reese and All Saints. Who's great for petites? Oh, my go-to, honestly, my favorite, favorite go-to for petites was Lord & Taylor's. Lord oh. & Taylor's closed their flagship uh, New York City store a few years back, even before COVID and the lockdown. And now I see, right, some of the brick and mortars, it's, it's, it's been a challenge. Um, so for petites, my go-tos are Ann Taylor, Banana Republic, also Lafayette 148, and I will hop on Macy's, either in-store or online, macy's.com, because it's unfortunate the petite selection is less. So if you're on this call right now and you're a petite customer, don't think it's you that you can't find it. The stores are carrying less and less inventory, um, so I'm having more success finding petites online. There's a few brands that Macy's carries that I have um, great success with for petites. Well, let's talk a little bit about Macy's. Yes. They're huge, yeah, Lee, do you wanna, do you wanna, they're a huge advertiser, right, Lee? Yeah, absolutely, I mean, and, and for a lot of our clients, so I'm kind of curious, like, what are they doing right? What are they doing wrong? Are they trending in the right direction for, in, in the eyes of a fashion expert as your, such as yourself? Yeah, well, Macy's, um, Macy's is known for their sales, right? Macy's is, um, you know, for the masses. They've got a little bit higher price points. They've got the budget price points. They've got contemporary, juniors, children's, men's, women's, the gamut. Um, and they are known for their sales. So you, it, it's funny when I'm shopping online, my clients are always like, well, can you wait till there's a sale? I'm like, there's always a sale <laughs> at Macy's. Some of the mer new merchandise in the new season is at full price but they definitely make sure to offer those incentives. But Macy's is catching up with the times. They've been doing some um, creative things. They just signed on in response to wanting to highlight and showcase more uh, uh, people of color, black owned businesses. They've actually just signed the 15% pledge. So they are actually going to be devoting more shelf space to specifically black enterprises, um, designers, and uh, this past weekend, they actually are doing um, pop-ups for this brand new brand, and they're doing more experiential experiences because you've got to make the brick and mortar experience just a little more enticing, a little more entertaining for clients and customers. So they were doing pop-ups outside Chicago, New York, planning one in Fort Lauderdale. So again, it's about these collaborations bringing meaning little bit of social consciousness and a uh, little bit of sustainability, bringing these concepts to their store just so they can keep up with the competition. Because anyone can hop on Instagram and find like the latest fine brand that is not carried in the Macy's. So they're kind of waking up and saying, hey, we have to bring in some independent designers, um, do some creative things in terms of more engaging and entertaining retail experiences. So Tanya, based off of that, because you know we were talking when we were doing prep for this, we were talking to Tanya about like uh, we get I get so many coupons. So how can advertisers get that to the consumers? Is it event announcements? Is it social media? Is it you know we have traditional sellers on here for TV and radio. Um, how can they talk to their retail clients about the best ways to promote that? 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. What have you seen? Lots of coupon codes in your inbox. Um, more than ever, people are online shopping, especially in the evenings. Parents wait till after the kids are put to bed, eight, nine o'clock at night. I'll get text messages from my clients at like nine, 10 o'clock at night. What do you think of this? What do you think of that? So people are checking online shopping. They're checking their emails. They're checking Instagram for brands. They're checking Facebook for um, trends. So definitely um, have access to things like Honey. I use Honey for my clients so that every time they purchase, it searches for uh, discounts and codes. Um, you know, other, sorry, the name is escaping me, but there's other little like tricks, tricks of the trade for um, online shopping to get those kickbacks and incentives. So in their inbox, I actually subscribe on Amazon.com. It's called The Drop because they're doing specialty collaborations with um, unique designers. So I actually get text message alerts from Amazon The Drop when it's like, hey, here's the latest designer collab or one of my favorite uh, sustainable beauty brands, Beauty Counter. I get texts in my inbox, hey, order by Friday and get 15% off. So obviously, you know, you need consent when they sign up for the newsletter or they sign up uh, to be on the mailing list, but via text, via social media, Facebook, Instagram, and via email, right in the inbox. Give them that incentive. Consumers need that incentive to buy. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide here, Adam. And uh, I, I moved this slide up for you, uh, Tanya, uh, because I want you to, to kind of illustrate this. As we're going from the work from home, now back back into the office, and it's not just us, it's it's everybody else, uh, there's a transition that's happening. I was wondering if you could speak to that and also uh, what, the, what the best sellers are for both men and women. Absolutely. So we have become this casual nation, right, in the last year. And I have seen uh, in my fashion design days this uh, progression to a more business casual. Um, Jenny Lyons, who is CEO of um, J. Crew, she was the one that actually invented the wear the T-shirt and jeans but pop a blazer on top of it uh, business casual. So I've been seeing the business casual trend um, really taking on more and more the last 10 years. Um, like I mentioned, a lot of my clients are also executives and partners of their accounting and financial and law firms. And now it's up to them. I'm actually consulting them to advise them to set the tone for this return back to live and in person at the office. And it is a mixed bag out there. <laughs> Women showing up to work in their dress and heels, but then also, you know, employees and gentlemen, you know, still showing up in the sweatshirts or the jeans or the t-shirts. So it is a little bit of this recalibration time. Everyone's gotten to used to working from home, being casual, either in like sweats or yoga gear, this athleisure, but there's a way to do business casual that's also business smart. So just putting it out there for each and every one of you that's on the call today, start thinking about how you're investing in your image. Start thinking about what do you want to project? What is that message you want to send through your clothing? It shows, I like to say it's the three pillars, self-care, self-confidence, and self-expression. I mean, I had some executives saying people are just rolling out of bed, you know, not even brushing their hair on Zoom calls. It was like, hey, this is a professional meeting. Uh, we've heard things of like being caught with your pants down, literally. <laughs> Lawyers in, you know, Florida showing up for court dates with no shirt on because they're in Florida. Um, but now it's a return to the office. We went from just surviving to thriving again. So think Talk about that investment in your own image and what that means for you and what you want to project. The button up. Yeah, go ahead, Celine. I'm sorry to interrupt. We had a question come in about men since we've got um, Bill Gates up here with his suit to casual. We had a question come in, I just wanted to interrupt you because I thought it was really interesting. Yes. What, you know, we have um, someone who question, came in and said, you know, I have uh, clients that are suit stores, that are, you know, tailored suit stores. What, what should I tell them? Because if we're doing this casual dress, what can I do to help them? And what can I tell them for advertising? If suits Absolutely. are anything? Absolutely. So um, my colleague, Tavia Sharp of Style Sharp, she's a menswear stylist and menswear expert. And she and I um, work closely together. I style the women, she styles the men's. She was also a fashion designer for years and years um, for Calvin Klein brands. 
So she and I touched base before this presentation. She said she has not sold a tie to a client in like <laughs> over a year. So the example on the Bill Gates, right? There's still a way to look business professional. So um, the top five best sellers definitely still tailored jackets and blazers. Lee, you look so sharp today in your tailored blazer oh. and you're looking down. You don't need a tie. You're looking business smart. You're looking business casual, looking really chic. Chinos, right? That alternative to the jogger pants or the sweatpants. Chinos and jeans, um, the five pocket pant. It still looks sharp. It still looks professional, but it's very easy to put um, a blazer on top to be that business smart, business casual. Um, button down shirts in demand. Get them in new colors. Get them in new patterns. Um, put them in rotation. Give gentlemen, you know, a reason to dress again. Polos are also a nice alternative to the button down shirt. They look smart, they're professional, they have a collar. Um, t shirts are okay as long as they're paired back with a blazer. Um, but these are the top five. But very rarely has um, ties been uh, trending in the last year. We'll have an opportunity for some question and answers directly from you, our live audience. So feel free to start typing those questions in in the, in the questions box over on the right side of your GoToWebinar panel. But uh, obviously we talked about the men, what are the best sellers for women? Um, well, before, you know what, we're, I just wanted to break in. Um, we're like running, we're running out of time and why don't we let some people do some questions and we'll cover some of the categories and we can always loop back around to this. Um, but let's, let's keep moving forward. I think we're doing okay on time. Um, well, I, yeah. I, I understand, but it, let's let's swing back around and let's maybe let's what we can do is cover shoes and Tony can talk to us about the best sellers for women's apparel for for shoes and that after. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks for keeping us on time. The data involved in this too for everyone. Yeah. If it's all right, Celine, I'll just finish with the top sellers for women since we did the men's and then we'll hop okay. to uh, your point. So again, that return to business smart, business casual for women, definitely blouses and tops. Washability has been key. No 100% silk, need to dry clean it. People are working from home, they're taking care of their kids, they want that washability. So tops, blouses, t-shirts. Also a return to the pant, but side zip, a little bit of stretch, stretch jeans and leggings, and dresses. Many of my clients hasn't, haven't worn a dress in over a year and they miss it. And now it's summer and it's hot. So dresses have been a top seller. Uh, not so much pumps and high heels, but flats, loafers, and sneakers. And then jackets, but easier jackets. Jackets that are made out of knit or stretch fabric. And fun fact, the wireless bra, because it's more comfortable. Women were like wearing their sports bras, but the industry caught up to it. No more underwire, it's more about comfort. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and jump in. If we have any questions from, from, the, uh, from the audience, let's go ahead and take a few. Patrick, what do we have over there? Sure, uh, we have some people asking, kind of circling back to the men's clothing sections. They're asking, should they skip new suits and ties or just invest in business casual from now on? So, Every gentleman should have um, a good go-to uh, head-to-toe suit. Um, that fits you now. That's the right fit and the right tailoring. What you can do with your head-to-toe suits that you already own is you can break them apart and wear that suit jacket back with a chino or a five-pocket jean. Um, it, again, it depends on you and that target audience and that target client you're speaking to. If you're dealing with higher-end luxury brands, if you're dealing with, um, you know, if you're in that space of retail space, like the person on the call with that um, suitor, um, then you want to project that image of a little bit more elevated and polished with the tie. And the way gentlemen are wearing the tie is just by unbuttoning the top button, wearing it a little bit more relaxed and loose. But I would say the investments are in the button down shirts, uh, a great sports jacket that can be worn separately with those chinos or five pocket jeans. Um, if you are going to invest in a tie or ties, just make sure it's up to date and, and relevant. Not so, um, you know, the trends with ties change and also look great uh, depending on the, the built of the gentleman. But sports jackets, polos, button down shirts, 
this kind of business casual but still pulled together and smart is going to continue to evolve. Okay, great. Uh, we wanted to circle back real fast. I know we had a great question come in before uh, everyone else was able to get on, you know, due to our technical difficulties. So we wanted to circle back to that question, you know, ask about someone asked about the great pop up colors for fall and you had some great advice. We wanted to have say it again for the live audience so everyone else can get on these great advice. Yes, color is one of my favorite things uh, to talk about in fashion. As an image consultant, I'm also a certified color uh, analysis. So when I meet with a client, it's all about uh, creating their power color palette based on their hair, eye, and skin tone. So the fashion trends and the fashion colors will uh, be put out there, but it's also up to you to be discerning about which color actually looks right on you um, and flatters your skin tone and which color also brings you energy. Color is also an energy, but for fall, you're gonna see um, beautiful jewel tones from sapphire blues, emerald green, uh, magenta pink, and there's this new color called spice, where it's in between kind of like a cinnamony color. And of course, you can anchor that all back to this gorgeous alternative to wearing black, navy, or gray, is this gorgeous deep wine color. They're calling it winery, almost in that Bordeaux color that looks beautiful on both men and women. So if you guys have any further questions, we will have another Q&A session at the end of the webinar, but, but, but let's go ahead and go to the next slide. And let's start talking about our sub-vertical analysis. And we're gonna start with, we're gonna at least cover two of these and, and if time permits, we'll cover more. If we don't, if time runs out, we'll cover them in, in the slide deck and you'll be able to download those. So Celine, take it away and let's talk about the sub-vertical analysis for clothing stores. Yeah, again, thanks Tanya for all your insights on, um, on back to work and trends um, for fall. It's definitely a lot of great information our clients can use when they're talking about advertising. But getting back into advertising, this is what we're looking at for clothing stores. Again, this is from BI Advantage's forecast of data. We look at clothing stores for 2021, three billion will be spent in local advertising. Now, um, the top five media um, for this, direct mail, of course, gets the biggest amount, 1.4 billion, um, followed by online mobile, radio, broadcast radio, which is radio over the air, and print newspapers. Um, so BI Advantage clients, you can run uh, this beautiful slide in your Advantage and the Vertical Alerts report, and you can also look at the data. Uh, TV is not on here, but TV is um, definitely um, a good share of this. It just didn't make the top five. And next slide. And so when we look at that split, if we remember, you know, the last slide, we saw the top five are a mix of traditional and online. For clothing stores, three billion. Um, the three billion that will be spent in 2021. Uh, traditional gets the majority of that. Again, there's that radio and direct mail and TV and um, newspapers. That's the traditional, like it's the largest amount. Um, followed by the digital, which is that online and mobile. And when we look at the 34% share, it's 1 billion in digital ad spend in 2021. And that majority of it is going to display and search. Classified verticals are gonna be your listing sites like eBay, it could be um, um, as an example. Um, it also can be verticals like um, uh, for shopping, uh, shopping sites that um, bring in a lot of brands, including Amazon, are going to be part of that, um, along uh, with search being a top part of it. Video display um, is small, but again, it's growing, and video display is going to be your pre-mid, post-roll, OTT, anywhere on the internet. And with that, I'll hand it over to Lee. Okay, so uh, Tanya covered a lot of great fashion trends for 2021. Let me, let's cover a few of the business trends that you'll find in AdMall's local count intelligence reports. Clothing store sales increased 2.6% from May of this year to June of this year. So it's, it's already ticking up. It's up 47.1% from a year ago, not surprising. 2021 apparel spending is expected to jump 78% over last year. Again, that's, that's a little bit of glimpse of post-pandemic versus in the pandemic. Uh, we're seeing that the back to office trend. Uh, another thing that's driving is, is resale clothing. Uh, 10 years ago, that was 4% of the typical worker's closet. It's expected to be 9% uh, this year. And subscription services, we all have, have these boxes that, that you can get. You can send in your measurements and they'll send you their ideas about what would look good on you. That represents a growing threat to clothing store sales because uh, people, women's clothing shoppers who spend at least $600 a year on, on clothing are 86% more likely than the average adult to use a subscription service such as this. Next slide. 
from our audience scan study, we also have some interesting tidbits that you can use as conversation starters or insight that you can provide to provide value to, to your prospects, including 38% of US adults who spend at least $60, $600 a year on women's clothing have taken action after seeing a sponsored search result. And next slide. And I'll, I'll just cover a couple of these, uh, but uh, definitely target the female executive for, for back to office. Uh, it, again, it, it, visual social media advertising. 16% uh, of back to school shoppers, for example, are active on TikTok, something to, to kind of keep in mind. And uh, you know, this digital acceleration is a priority for 88% of, of retail execs. Uh, you know, and so that if you're competing with chain stores and online competitors, uh, the mobile and e-commerce development is something that you can really focus on. Let's go to the next sub vertical. And Selene, why don't you update us on, on the latest data that BIA has for shoe stores? Thanks, Lee. Next slide. Shoe stores. Okay, so not as big as clothing stores, but still up there. Uh, I know I contribute to this all the time. 659 million for 2021. Again, when we look at the traditional uh, digital, the top five, direct mail gets the majority of that. Um, I think I, if I open my desk drawer right now, I probably have three direct mail pieces for shoe discounts already. <laughs> Online, uh, mobile, t broadcast TV and radio. Broadcast TV and broadcast radio, yay. There they are, there's that TV. I know we get asked all the time. Newspaper people, it's not on here because they're not the top five, but they're right underneath there. Um, and next slide, please. When we look at that, again, that digital traditional, again, retailers overall, you know, they really still are heavily on the, those di traditional channels. Um, and you can see that in here too with shoe stores. And then of that digital, um, 235 million in digital ad spend, again, display ads, big, visuals are big, search, people searching for, um, what was I searching for the other day? Waterproof um, hiking boots or hiking sneakers, for example. Classified verticals are going to be those category sites for shoes, um, including Amazon is going to be part of that. So you can see that video display is a little higher for them. That's a pre-made post roll um, on uh, the internet. Uh, again, the video, while a small percentage, is one of the top growers. And I'll turn it back to Lee for some insights. So on the business trend side of it, fashion footwear grew 7% in the first quarter versus the first quarter of, of 2020. That's significant because the pandemic really didn't start uh, putting the brakes on, on a lot of retail sales until till March of last year. So for two of those months or whatever, uh, you know, it, it's somewhat normal. Children's fashion footwear grew 78%. And uh, of course, that makes sense, though, because when you think of it, it's like, you know, Selena, when you and I both had had kids of you know, elementary school age and everything like that, it seems like our kids were outgrowing their shoes like every six months. So you know, not not surprisingly that uh, children's fashion footwear is, 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 a, is a big seller. Twenty one percent of back to school shoppers say that they will be buying footwear this season, but they want style. But they're also looking for comfort. So the trend that we're seeing there is that the, we're seeing continued purchase of hiking and running shoes in, in a big way. We're also seeing sales of high heels uh, slip. So multifunctionality is the growing trend for children's shoes. So we want to buy them shoes wear that, that they can wear uh, out, you know, out, outside for play, inside for video games, inside for school, uh, you name it. Now, this was an interesting stat that our local account intelligence report pulled up is that 59% of people who bought shoes online during COVID say that they will go back to buying in person again post pandemic. So that bodes very well then for your uh, bricks and mortar shoe stores. Next slide. As far as the audience goes for women shoe shoppers, women who spend at least $500 a year on casual and dress shoes, say they're 31% less likely to go past the first page of search results than the average US adult. So being on the first page of the Google listings and, your, and, and selling the SEO services, very important then if your advertisers are trying to reach women's shoe shoppers. Next slide. When it comes to the men's shoe shoppers, 52% of men's footwear shoppers say they have responded to pre and post roll video ads during the, during the past year or so. That goes to what Celine was just talking about. And last slide for this category, uh, let's talk about some of the shell selling to shoe stores. Again, there's that search rankings thing again. You have to focus on keywords for footwear styles, brands, the local market, uh, of course, the store brand, and of course, they include terms like back to school, back to campus, back to office. Uh, definitely recommend video on demand advertising for, for showing off the men's fashion styles, the, out, the outdoor, the athletic footwear. 
uh, use co-op advertising funds to expand the budget. Use AdMall, go in there and, and, and pull up the, the, the shoe brands in that provide co-op advertising programs and use those for, for your digital as well as your traditional and you'll be able then to, to sell a lot more by expanding the marketing budget. And uh, you know, definitely help improve their online sales with in-store curbside pickup. Uh, another big thing, by the way, it's like, you know, we had mentioned, Celine and I had mentioned both uh, the emails that we get with the special offers. Ask a question about how they're encouraging co customer loyalty for repeat customers. So those loyalty programs, very important to this particular audience. We've got time to go ahead and hit, the, hit, hit one more of the verticals. And so the next one is going to be, uh, would you, so Celine, do you want to do discount department stores or do you want to skip ahead to warehouse clubs? Let's do warehouse because discount. All right, let's, let's skip ahead. And, yeah, this will be in your slide deck. So take it away, Celine. Yeah. <laughs> well, we talked a lot about discount department stores with Tanya. So I mean, the, we just have the again the data on, and I think we've covered that really well. So warehouse clubs. People don't think about warehouse clubs for back to school shopping much, but yeah, it does happen. I mean, if you think about school supplies, um, and you think about clothing too. You know, those you know, smart consumers will go there for that. They do merchandise for that. You know, uh, for sure. And the super says Walmart. I know, like we, one of the statistics that I didn't cover earlier is that there is about 44% of parents that are going to go to Walmart and Target, and they're going to go buy the kits. So, you, people who don't have kids in, um, in, uh, in in school, um, in K through 12, well, actually it's really K through probably eighth grade. Uh, a lot of the local areas, they put together the supply list and they have them all packed together so that you don't have to sit there for an hour trying to figure out what does my kid need. It's already packaged for your class or your grade and you just grab it and you pay for the whole thing. Um, so that's uh, you know that's another way, something else that they can promote um, and that uh, is something that drives uh, families to those warehouse clubs and super centers. And for that, you know, they spend big five billion this year. Um, direct mail again is going to be a big part. Online mobile, we see that broadcast radio and traditional newspapers uh, with the top five big spend. Next slide. And then for the breakout again, traditional is still driving that. Uh, 34% digital, 1.7 billion in ad spend, display ads search, and that classified verticals again, driven probably by Amazon in that 22%. Um, you're going to see that breakout for digital. So again, display and search are big. Video display is tiny, but again, one of those areas that's really growing. And I'll turn it back to Lee. So from our audience scan data, one of the things that we do that we have not talked about uh, during this entire series is that we also then do customer profiles for some of the largest chain stores and largest franchise advertisers. So there are some interesting tidbits there. Costco shoppers, for example, 43% more likely to be an early adopter of new technology than the average U.S. adult. And the next one is with Walmart shoppers. Adam, go ahead, next slide. Walmart shoppers 11% more likely to be active on Pinterest than the average US adult. So these are types of profiles of shoppers that you can find through audience scan with your AdMall subscription. Next slide. So we're gonna go, we have time for a little bit more Q&A and uh, Tanya, I'd like to bring you back in here because one of the things that, uh, one of the ways in which these clothing stores, shoe stores, uh, clothing stores and the like that can compete with the, you know, some of the bigger chain stores and the online providers uh, is through making shopping there an experience. Uh, so how would you speak to that? How could you advise uh, some of our media sellers out there that, that help their clients, help their stores and create a better shopping experience for back to school, back to office? Yeah, so again, depending on the store, whether it's you know family owned uh, local businesses or if it's the chains, it is that um, you know it really is combining the necessities with the aspirational. People need a little bit of that feel good or a little bit of that fantasy right now. So hosting, um, you know, think I know Mother's Day and Father's Day have passed, but think of the holidays coming up. What can they do, uh, special events, um, and collaboration is key. Is it, um, you know, it, we're talking clothing and retail and, and shoes, but is it collaborating with, you know, other local businesses to bring in and highlight, um, you know, a little bit of real estate or what the schools are doing or et cetera. So it's really about um, the necessities, the aspirational, and also bring that heritage and meaning like what is that history behind that local 
you know, mom and pop store? Or what is the history behind the brand? Make it meaningful for consumers, but also make it entertaining and educational. So again, these like a trunk show or a Saturday, you know, meet and greet the designer, you know, have the designer come in or have the stylists there. Um, I used to travel to Von Mar and Bloomingdale's to do trunk shows with Donald Kleiner shoes where it was meet the stylist. So think of those things you can do that are educating, entertaining, um, but also just and that local flavor, whatever's going at, on in your retailer's local town, think of these collaborations. Um, it's, it's not about isolating and operating in a bubble anymore. It's about a collaboration for sure. Selena, did you have one last question? Tanya, just a question. What can, um, what's, the, what's the number one thing our advertisers can talk to their retail clients about for back to school, back to work? Um, what do you think they should be, um, besides the experiences, what's the other thing you think that they should really be focusing on for back to school and back to work? Well, I think you really, um, you and Lee, between your reports and my reports, is really recapping and highlighting, um, you know, those key bestsellers. Again, it's listening to the consumers. It's listening to the clients as to what they want, what they need, and what they're desiring now. Um, make it fun. It's a feel-good. Uh, fashion clothing, yes, it's a necessity, um, but it's also a feel-good. So um, to your point, I think it's just, you know, highlighting those key bestsellers, um, going into the more comfort shoes. I love what you said, Lee, about that comfort, but that also creates that confidence um, in our appearance. And I see that, you know, inside and out. And I love, to your point, Celine, um, creating those bundles. Not everyone knows how to choose clothing for themselves. So the more um, the in-house salespeople or the in-house stylists can listen to the consumers, listen to the clients, what they need, give that feedback to the CEOs and people at the top. It's just gonna be a win-win all around. Um, sales definitely include uh, being incentive. I love getting those you know, paper flyers in the mail too from uh, my stores and department stores, as well as my uh, text messages. So again, I think it's just blending that need with the desire and, and just that idea that it's, Clothing is a feel good again. So Tanya, thank you so much for all of your insight. It's just been outstanding today. Great value then for, for, for the clients of BIA and, and for Sales Fuel. I can't thank you enough for, for, for stopping in. I will be using you, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I have you hunting me down a new pair of eyeglass frames. Uh, but if, for those of the people in the audience then who really want to up their game, who uh, you know, who want to dress like for the position for the position they want, not the position that, that they're in. Uh, you know, how can they reach out to you? Oh, absolutely. It just starts with a discovery call. We can discuss your goals for your image, how it relates to your uh, current role and your future goals. And you can find me at sterlonstyle.com. You can when you click through the website, you'll see a contact page. Book a discovery call. We can just hop on and chat. And for those of you interested in, I focus mostly on uh, women's wear, but if you're, for the gentleman on the call, I highly recommend my colleague, Tavia Sharp. Her website is styledsharp.com. Fantastic, thank you very much. And uh, BIA and Sales Fuel, once again, this month has put together a nice uh, handout on vertical analysis. So Celine, why don't you tell us more about that? Next slide. Well, yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, so um, the verticals, as we've done with the past webinars, when you download the vertical analysis here, not only are you getting the ones we covered today, but ones we've covered in previous webinars. So um, that includes like lawyers and accounting, real estate, road trips, all those verticals. And again, it's the data that you saw today in the presentation, um, and there's the link, um, but you're also gonna get it in the email. And let's fast forward because Tanya has a great uh, slide with all of her contact information. I know she said it ver verbally out loud, can we forward the slides to her? There we go. So there's her contact information. Again, you guys will all be getting the um, the slides, but just if you want to take it down real quickly, I thought we'd pop it up for her. All right? Yeah, excellent. So you can see connect with you can connect with me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. It's Tanya Sterl at Sterlon Style, and uh, Tavia and I are throwing in a little extra bonus too. We're going to provide uh, Lee and Celine with our link. 
um, to sign up and you'll receive our uh, back to work uh, guide to style. So and we'll notice they're both wearing magenta. <laughs> exactly, color that never goes out of style. Let's, let's hear more about BIA Advantage. Uh, Selene, tell us more about that. Oh yeah, you know, you saw some of our data today and that was just what we call the sample. If you want the whole cupcake or the dozen cupcakes, this is where you need to go. What you're seeing on here is our Advantage. We cover all the markets in the US of TV, radio, newspaper, marketing areas, designated marketing areas. We cover all the media, um, the concurrent past and future growth of your market. Um, you can find that through Advantage. Um, our clients love it. As you see on the right, they give us two years in a row, four out, four out of four stars. And, you know, they're, it's extremely it's extremely useful in selling. And if you're interested, you can just reach out to us and we can do a demo for you. All right, great. Let's go to the next slide. So you will be getting the full complete slide deck from, from today, including some of the stuff that we didn't cover. In that slide deck, by the way, there's a lot of visuals that we're also including uh, fr from Tanya. Uh, there's also a handout that you'll be getting with all kinds of style tips from, from Tanya and her colleague as well that you'll be getting as an extra bonus for attending and registering for today's webinar. For next month's webinar, a reminder, we're gonna focus on insurance and mortgages. I mean, you can't, I mean, you can't, turn the channel without seeing an insurance commercial, it seems these days, and mortgages are red hot right now. So we're gonna talk about how to tap into the digital side of that, register there by uh, by using the link right there. You can also then go to either the salesfuel.com or the BIA websites as well. That's gonna be Tuesday, August 24th, so circle your calendars for the next installment of our local digital event series. Next slide. And I mentioned some of the, the, the data that we showed you today comes from AdMall, which is tactical business intelligence for local marketing and media sales. It's a great way for you to be prepared for every sales call. It just takes a couple of minutes. And, and with a couple of minutes hitting the AdMall.com website, you can sell smarter with AdMall, uh, including we have, we have new leads every week. We have that co-op advertising database, our digital audit, uh, and of course, in the audience scan data that they had mentioned, AdMall.com is where you go for that. Next slide. Also from Sales Fuel, we have Coach Feed, which is a brand new product. This is a way, this actually uses uh, psychometric profiles as well as uh, sales acumen uh, to improve your salespeople in just two minutes a day. If you're a manager uh, you know, and you don't have time for more one-on-one -on -one sessions, this is a great way to do sales micro coaching in two, two minute chunks every day through Slack and email. Starting with the sales mindset, nothing changes until the mindset changes, improving the sales credibility, and also there's an account-based coaching feed there that directly impacts revenue. Next slide. So that's how you develop the salespeople you have. It's also it's a great retention tool as well, uh, but you're going to have openings on your staff, and it's getting harder and harder to fill those. So Sales Fuel Hire helps you make sure that, you know, you know to improve your BS detector. And it is backed by the same psychometric assessments and the science that we had talked about before. It's a great way to discover your high potentials, but also then to steer clear of sales imposters and most importantly, avoid toxic troublemakers. Uh, and, and we are behavioral analysts here at Sales Fuel and also one of the top 10 vendors as ranked by Selling Power Magazine. Learn more about this at salesfuel.com slash hire. Next slide. We want to thank all of you for attending, and if those of you who have questions and comments that you didn't that we didn't get to during today's session, uh, please reach out to BIA Advisory Services and Celine Matisson. There is her email address. Audrey Strong is our Vice President of Communications here at Sales Fuel. She was not hosting today's webinar because she has earned a well-deserved vacation, uh, so we'll welcome her back tomorrow. But you can email her a strong at salesfuel.com. Next slide. And of course, we have the media definitions and we have then all the contact information for, for Tanya. So thank you for attending today's webinar. We look forward to seeing you again in August. Have, go out there and have a great sales day.